Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're gonna get even buzzier than before. So, I hope you guys are ready. So jump starting today, we have a little bit of a uh, visitor. I wanna go ahead and uh, say hi to this wandering trader because it has a really good trade. 10 emeralds for a totem of undying? Uh, yes, I will use my emeralds for that, 100%. Um, and I wanna take a look here. Actually, do we have another trade I can do? I might as well do this. I'll go ahead and grab those. That way we can get some of these growing. Get a few more growing. I can just harvest those as needed. But this thing right here is really good. It's used in a lot of stuff, including the advanced uh, spell book. So just one of the few things it's used for. But it's also his charm here. Uh, spawns around the player. Can be in your inventory. Bobble. Okay. Basically turning this totem of unexchange. What is that? Uh, no more wanderer. <laughs> Does that prevent the wanderer from showing up? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it's used in a lot of cool stuff. We can summon Vex by using this thing. So it is something I definitely want to keep around. Not so much as use, but you might notice some weird things in my inventory. What is this? That's a slingshot. So right here, this may not be the best slingshot in the world, but it's a slingshot, right? So to make this, it's, it's just a simple as making the bowstring, all you need is a little bit of string, um, and that's basically it. Um, so it's it's just the body, you need the blueprint for the body. So if we take a look at silence and slingshot, you can see right here, we just need the slingshot itself, um, and then you just combine the, I know it doesn't show right here like it should, but you can use this to make it a, a specific bow part, or you can combine everything together to go ahead and craft it. So this is actually a tool rod, uh, which would be like a stick. This is the bow string. And then this right here is the two different material types that you can choose to put on here. Um, so I ended up going with the new iron that you find that's from silence uh, that you find in the nether. So I went ahead and put the crimson on here. And so altogether, this thing's not bad. It has heart, which increases the harvest speed and the de it, or decreases range damage. That's kind of not a good thing, um, but it, it's as the item is damaged, it, it slowly goes down. But some of the other stuff is really nice. Being able to pull the items after we kill a mob, it's gonna be very useful because today I gotta go to the nether. And yeah, I wanna set up a little bit of a, a farm in, that, in the nether. So I need to grab a little bit of cobblestone for this because what I wanna do is I wanna set up the blaze spawner and just sort of farm the blaze spawner for a little while because I need that. I need um, some of the blaze stuff. I like, could definitely blaze rods and a few other things. Um, some of the other stuff we need is Enderman. Like I haven't got a hold of Enderman yet, but not a lot of them. I have killed a few, but getting a hold of some Ender Pearls would be really nice. Over here, I went ahead and made some uh, Inferium seeds with the Inferium that we had built up so far from mining and such. And I went ahead and made some Inferium uh, seeds. These are gonna grow Inferium Essence and allow us to make more and more seeds. And I also want to test and see if my rats will actually farm this. That's what I want to see. Um, so far, I'm not seeing... I mean, of course, I haven't sat here and watched because this does grow pretty slow. But yeah, this, this is working off of these growing. So hopefully that's the case. So right here is my spawner. And I kind of want to set this up. Uh, now, Apotheosis is in here. So technically, we could like speed this up even more um, and get this thing rocking and rolling. But first, I kind of want to enclose it a little bit. Um, if I can, I know these guys are going to bother me, but uh, we do have some fire resistance, which makes it a little bit nicer. So like we don't take damage from this. Um, I want to cap it in the top here. Cap it off just like that. I don't even think us standing it. Yeah, us standing in fire doesn't bother me either. So that that's good to know. Um, pop this. Yeah, this guy's in the way. So a couple of shots here and there. There we go. Out of the way. Perfect. So what I want to do is definitely enclose this. You can see they can spawn on the outside. It could be a little bit of a problem. Can I? Oh, I can't. I can hit them from there. Okay. So let me go ahead and get this enclosed up because I need to farm a few things. I need to farm the molten cores from these guys. I'm not so much worried about the blaze itself. It's actually the molten cores that I really want. 
And to make this an easy farm, all I gotta do is just build a little section on top here. Just to keep them from flying away. So I can just take them out. So right here, I have a really powerful farm sort of set up. It's because these are so close to each other, which is kind of like the perfect circumstance. I can sort of just go back and forth. Oh, farming it so long as this guy doesn't hurt me. Wet. There we go. Whew. I'm kind of low on health and it's, it's honestly my fault from building this. I'm bumping into these guys and yeah, this cheese doesn't really fill me up very much. Mostly for the rats. Anyways, this right here is doing a pretty decent job. It is very noisy. <laughs> I will give you that. Um, but I'm able to just sort of come back and set back and just farm these guys and the magnets tend to pull it so long as we don't have fire just everywhere. Um, I could sit here and just farm these guys. And I'm getting a good amount of molted cores here, which is honestly what I'm after. I'm definitely after it. This will get us towards a coal bee and um, many other things as well. Like this is just good in general for reliquary to have. Um, this is something that we're gonna have to farm this way. Well, there's, there's other ways to farm these mobs, don't get me wrong. Um, I do wanna touch on those and get some of this set up. Like eventually we'll have the ability to set up um, some other farms. I think another good farm would probably be the one from Industrial Foregoing, the, the actual mob grinder. It is such a powerful tool. And that'd be a good one to actually set up. So I think I've got just about as many as I want. Uh, we should have enough to totally get a coal bee going, just a little bit of breeding. And we will have the ability to have coal from our bees, which I definitely want. So as you guess it, I have the bees, the, the bees. Uh, actually, I should probably fix this hole. Um, we have a hole in our wall. Hole needs to be fixed. Um, so this is our bee breeding chamber yet again. We're gonna, we're gonna breed our bees in here. All right, um, enough of those. We have our two bees. We need to get blazing bees. And to do that, I need wither rib for this bee and then the molten cores to be able to get the blazing bee. And that actually shouldn't be too bad. So these should definitely breed. Uh, two of these go to this bee. And then two of these go to this bee. Or three of these, sorry. And that will breed a magma bee. Yes, and it's it was shooting flames. That was that was unexpected. Now, oddly enough, this bee on its own is actually really nice and could substitute for Blaze. Like uh it's it's honestly just as good. But I do want to make at least two coal bees. So I need a leaf bee for this, which just needs a flower. This gets two blazing cores. Four. Four blazing cores. They are going to join together. It is literally on fire to make this awesome coal bee. Now I do want to make one more. So to do that, make sure this guy is all hearted. And we yet breed again. And as soon as I can make two, I can then breed those and we can have as many coal bees as we want. We could literally just have all of our bees be coal bees. You know what? I am. That's a good idea. It's just, I, all I need is coal. Wait, I need, I need coal though. Ah, I need coal in order to breed them though. Right. Uh, but anyways, it should be fine. Jar. Um, yeah, I think having as many of these as we possibly can is going to be a great idea, right? Or it could be a horrible idea. So four, five of those, and then that will make another coal bee. Then we just keep going from there, right? Just fill this whole room with coal bees. Just as many coal bees as we can possibly fit in this room. Oh, this sounds like a great idea. Just all of our coal, all of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going crazy with bees. I should probably stop. So at the moment, I am getting ready to set this bad boy up. I went ahead and I uh, did make a tier four beehive. Now the tier four beehive allows us to get a max comb of 20. So it might work a little bit better when it does say there's a hive tie modification of minus 20%. I, I still don't exactly know what those numbers mean, but I do know that this should work really well. I'm uh, planning on setting this up. I have another little setup down here, just sort of a walkway to get to this. And all I really have to do is get my fire. I am using a soul fire because of course these are our uh, coal bees and they're gonna be the soul of our entire system here. Um, I do wanna get a dispenser put up and place just like that. Place the beehive just like that. And that should be perfect. This is all nice and hidden. 
I could hide it a bit more. Not sure if I want to do that. Also, I noticed the face of this facing wrong. So I probably want to face this a different direction. Maybe facing it like this. So that way we can see the... I want to see the face because I don't want the piece to spawn in the wrong direction. Yeah, that's the face. Okay. Um, so it's placed a little bit wonky. But uh, this should work just fine. All right, now dirt, I should be able to fill this in so we don't have a hole here. And the, does that block the, uh, the smoke? It does seem like it does block the smoke. Man, I just wish I had some good lights for these setups. Oh wait, <laughs> my friend Flank's mod is in here called Simply Lights. Like I love this mod and it is actually in here. So these dynamic edge lights are beautiful or really anything like, um, I just want to use them in here and I'll show you. You can place them on the bottom of a block like this and they light up the bottom edge of a block. But in this case, you don't have to use them for the bottom. You can use them for the top and they do connect, by the way. Um, let me go ahead and place them here. I think I can place it up top here. Yeah. And they will connect. And like if you place them around a block, they will actively connect around the block as well. Um, and I think... Yeah, if you want them on the top, all I got to do is change these to the top. That's what I was wanting to go with was ones up top. And these will be top edge lights like this. So this is now giving off light. I was going to put a door in here, but now that I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I probably don't really need a door. Um, all I need is some way to get a chest in here. And then I need some dirt to expand this out because I would like to put this to use and get another path leading over here because I do want to use more of this land like we have this awesome landscape and I just want to have like ups and downs going all over the place and, and just put all kinds of different stuff all over the place uh, around our base. I think that's going to look fantastic. But let's see. Dirt. Um, There we go. Bunch of dirt. And I'm going to hand place this. There's a, I don't know. There's a difference between like hand placing blocks and like using other mods to do it. Like there's just something about hand placing these blocks that just, it just feels nice, you know? Just feels nice. I would use the building gadgets for like major things, but like some things just need that, you know, that hand place touch, I think. So last thing we need to do is we need to get the bees in here. Now, I don't want them wandering all over the place. Um, and I I probably just need to go ahead and I what I need what I should probably do, I will take a little bit of glass, which I, I keep running back and forth. Eventually, by the way, I will have a wireless network set up so I can access this wherever I'm at standing. Um, but for right now, I, I don't have the ender pearls to do that. Um, I do need to farm some ender pearls. I don't know a great place to do that yet. Other than the end, the end is fixed by the way, in this, uh, the version I'm currently on, which is the latest version. Be sure to make sure you update your mod packs. Um, because, uh, there were some major, major bugs related to the end that were in the prior version. So make sure you update the mod packs and keep them in the, uh, most up-to-date versions because that's the, uh, that's the way things get fixed. So. Um, if you experience any bugs in an older version, I mean, it's, it's really your fault for not updating. So be sure to do that, by the way. All right, let's go ahead and get our bees in here, and then we'll get the automation set up. So place the bee, and you're going to leave, aren't you? Oh, no. Good, good, good. You're going to do that thing. All right. Let's see how many I can get in here. They're probably all going to huddle up here, aren't they? Yeah, they're all going to try, and it, we'll get more coal blocks, I promise. But a few of them are going to build up. Perfect. And can I place that? Yes, I can. Okay. They're going in there. Now, I don't know. I don't know yet. But can this pull through blocks? If not, there is a thing that I can try and do that will hopefully allow it to go through. Now, I'm going to break this. I want to throw a chest. Hey, don't you? Uh, you know what? Wow. Wow, bees. You're really something else. You know that? Just, just leave, why don't you? Just leave, why don't you? All right, I want to test, does this pull through? Okay, it did seem, yeah, it does pull through. Okay, so that's that's what I want. That's what I wanted to make sure. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and place these bees back that decided to go ahead and wander out. That's why I need this fully enclosed. I don't want them wandering. It's gonna be more efficient if I keep them enclosed in a space and let them just utilize the space they have available. Now that ticking noise, I can of course make that go away. Um, right here, it's set to the dispenser. It should stop this. I don't know why this particular dispenser is not... Maybe there's another dispenser. Ah, oh, here's a fail. 
that's the one I need to fix is the fail. Okay, so both of them are working. Now, the reason the dispenser is failing is because I forgot to put something in here. <laughs> Leave it up to me to forget something. I'm trying to figure out a good way to get to it as well. Oh, without getting all of our bees in a frenzy trying to leave again. I forgot to put my scoop in here. So now that my scoop's in here, I should be able to take this. Hurry up and place this back. Get my glass back up. Whew. Okay. Everything's good. And now we just wait for these bees to start generating honeycombs. Now, as far as our other honeycombs, right? Because at this point, we've generated a lot of honeycombs. What am I doing for them? Well, I have a little bit of power that I'm running over here. Of course, coal is going to be helpful. I'm just running oak planks in this for right now. Just generating small amount of power to be able to run these. And I am generating all of the resources. And I mean a lot of resources. Like, this is a lot of stuff that we're getting from a small amount of bees. So, um, all of these bricks are beautiful, by the way. Because there are some really nice things you can build with them. Um, I want to keep all the glass bottles. So honey bottles are something that I have tons of. And as you can see, they don't exactly do what you want to do inside the crafting interface, but inside of your inventory, they do work fine, but they only stack to 16. So you can pull out, you know, 16 worth. Um, now setting up something that would automate these bottles. That's the only thing that's sort of preventing this particular centrifuge from being automated. But I think there's a uh, better centrifuges. Yeah, there's this one right here. Converts honeycombs into resources using RF. It is a centrifuge controller. And I feel like maybe this is a better centrifuge. Multi-block recipe only. Oh, does it does it, it breaks down honeycomb blocks? Does it give you higher percentages? I don't know. It does all seem like this, like this particular, I think it's yeah, it's honeycomb blocks here that it's showing can give you stacks. I don't know. I'll just see um, if it's worth doing. But this right here, all you got to do is put the bottles back in. It's going to start working again. Getting ourselves all that beautiful osmium. And uh, yeah, I can just do these by hand most of the time. Um, but yeah, setting up some kind of automation for this. I'm kind of thinking we would need a crafting, some kind of auto crafting set up for it. I know RF Tools has auto crafters. Um, are they updated into this version? That is the question. Ooh, they are. So an auto crafter might work. So I'm thinking about setting up some sort of like really primitive auto crafting for this. And I mean, very primitive. Let's see, uh, let's see exactly what I can do. I'm going to try and do this with you guys so I can go through the process of how I'm thinking about this logically. This is super simple, by the way. Um, it's just with our minimal resources, I could totally go about grabbing uh, mechanism pipes, uh, but I have to get started with a little bit of mechanism to do that. I want to try and do that with some of the early stuff before we dive into mechanism. To do that, um, I have these simple item cables from Cyclic. Uh, this, seem to, this seems to be probably one of the best. I don't know exactly if that's going to be the greatest option in the world, as this does tend to pull items without me being able to know exactly what they're pulling. So it could just pull bee beeswax, and that's the only item it's going to hold. I think it has like a internal buffer. Um, and it doesn't have it, like it's not updated enough to have the filter capabilities that I think it should have. Um, like I've not noticed any filter from this mod. Uh, there used to be um, in the older versions. I just don't think it's uh, it's just there yet. Um, so to do this, uh, let me go ahead and just pipe this right. By default, it's not going to work. We need a cable wrench. We need to click this to set that to extract mode. Now, as you can see, it just threw everything in here really quickly. And I don't want that to do that, right? I, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. I want to set this to only accept bottles. Now here's my test. Um, I'm going to grab some cobblestone and I'm going to set this up so it filters out. Um, so it won't let anything in except for the honey bottles that I have listed here. So all I got to do is set this to remember. And now it's going to remember exactly what items are here. So we don't need to keep this in here. We just need to know that, hey, honey bottles are here. Um, but you can see it's not bringing the honey bottles over. Hmm. I don't know if it's just because it doesn't stack or it's because I think this right here uh, has an item in it. When we break this, we're going to notice that item comes out. So yeah, that sort of breaks our logistics here because I can't really set up a filter 
to say, hey, uh, only do this, right? Um, yeah, and then that right there, sort of. <laughs> There's a bunch of arguments that are better there. All right, so that's not going to work. So we got to come up with a better solution for this. Y you know what? Well, if all else fails, you might as well get some of this automation set up. So I'm just going to do it through refined storage. <laughs> I know it feels like even more complicated than getting. Well, actually, no, this is pretty simple. We already have refined storage. Um, so to set this up, all I need to do is I need to say, OK, I need to pull from this chest and put everything from this chest into our inventory. That's going to be great because I really want all of my items going into my inventory anyways. Um, so this is going to export everything uh, and it's going to go into our network, right? Or sorry, we need to import or what am I, what am I saying? We need to import into the network. So the importer is going to pull stuff out of this chest and that's going to go into our system. Now I want to pull out of our system and I want that to go into this crafter and then I can set up an item pipe from such mods as cyclic to work because I'm only going to have one item that's being exported. Um, actually, I'm going to have two items that's going to be exported now that I think about it. I should probably think about this more. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to have two different items. What should I do with that? Maybe I should just have this go right back into our system as well. Might as well. So to do that, I'm just going to use another exporter and then I'm going to have a, or sorry, I'm going to have an importer. This is going to pull out. I need an exporter that's going to export our bottles into this system. Hopefully I'm not confusing you, uh, even though I probably am. And I need to get honey bottles in there. So let's grab honey bottles. I'm going to click on this and this will allow me to place honey bottles in here. And that should start taking honey bottles out of here and storing them in here. It's only going to store 16 though. Um, so keep that in mind. Now this doesn't have power yet, but I do need to give it some wood just to give it a little bit of power here. And this is going to start charging this up so it can do the auto crafts. I selected this. I'm going to set this to all input slots are recommended. This is going to be all input slots, which is the only one we have is here. I want it to um, take the remaining stuff and including the uh, the crafted uh, bucket. Um, and it says right here, the result, result of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer, but remaining items like buckets will stay. I don't want that to be the case. I want everything to be in here. So to do this, we just need to set it up like so. Hit apply. If I can drop these items, there we go. Hit apply. Make sure these are set back up. Hit apply there. And you can see it's going to craft and it's going to give us these items now while it's crafting that. So perfect. We have the craft set up. That's good. Um, you can set this to fast. I'm going to leave it on slow. It's not really going to matter. I just don't want it to use as much power. And we should be just about ready to go. I would just pull out of this directly, but um, unfortunately we have honey blocks to deal with now. So a way to get around that is probably going to be to hook up a, another importer to import the items. And then over here, I just want to put the bottles in here that that's going to be generating. So yet again, we're going to hook this in and I, I would say, I keep saying this is complicated, but honestly, it's not that bad. Um, just knowing what an importer and exporter can do in your refined storage system is probably the hardest part. Um, what I need to do now is pull out of our crafter. To do that, I'm just going to hook in a importer because it's going to import into our system, into here. And then right here, we're going to have an exporter because I want to pull items out of our system and put it into here. Okay. Now that that's all done, all we got to do is hook our cables up and then tell it what we want to put in there. Um, I want empty glass bottles to be done. As you can see, that's pulling out now. It should pull everything out of here and go into our system. This, I just want glass bottles to be put into here. Now it is automated. This whole setup is now automated. So long as we have power to power these two dynamos later on, of course, we're going to have power, but this is an automated centrifuge that is hooked up to our refined storage system. Um, so all we got to do is cover it up, make it look pretty. And you would never even know things were being automated here. Oh, nice. Uh, because we can set up these uh, nice little cobblestone uh, doodads here. I don't even know what these are called. Like in the wall. can kind of make it look like it's recessed in the wall a little bit. Place that there. Perfect. I think I have some more of these walls, right? Um, Cobble. Why did I at cobble? I have no idea. Yeah, these are slabs. Uh, here they are. So yeah, just place that there. 
and it looks pretty good. The only thing I probably should do is fix this back wall. But other than that, I think things are looking pretty good. By the way, to, to simplify this even further, what I should probably do is remove the hopper and everything from the equation. Since honestly, this needs to be pulled from here anyways, we should probably just set the importer directly on here. And that way we don't have to worry about any of uh, any, like we don't have to worry about that extra hopper step that this has to go through. It can just do its own thing here. And yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we will be able to see this cable, however. I thought there was a way to facade. I still haven't seen anybody mention a good way to facade. So I don't know. I'm going to be still checking the comments. Maybe it's just not updated yet to support facades. But man, I do miss them. So I totally did not expect this. Um. So yeah, the, I tell you what, the bees are just so powerful. I mean, this is this is crazy, right? So I have all of the combs. I haven't even touched the surface of this, but now that we have automation for it, oh man, things are gonna get a little bit nicer because what I can do now is if we can get these combs, once we get more of them, right? I'm gonna use this to generate more. And once we have enough coal bees, we can have a coal topia, a coal bee factory. All right, I'm getting a little obsessed with bees. I should probably stop. I don't know, you guys seem to like the bees. I like the bees. Man, it's, you could say it's the bees knees. All right, I'm, all right, it's too much, too much. All right, but we're right here. This gives you five, five a piece, five coal for each comb. That's a lot, that's a lot of coal. And so that is going to add up quickly and we're gonna have ourselves some coal going here. What I can do is I can just set up another um, importer or not an importer, an extractor and just extract to this and this and get this hooked up over there and we're good. All we gotta do is get our combs moved over here and uh, get them automatically put into our system and we could technically set this thing up to run on its own and it'd be just a, a factory for combs. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I, th I think it's enough of the bee puns for today. I do, however, wanna thank today's sponsor and that's gonna go to Thanks to FGTFL Hamster. Thank you so much for your Patreon uh, over on Patreon. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, if you would like to become a Patreon yourself, of course, be sure to check the description down below. While you're there, also be sure to join the Discord and uh, also check out my uh, my Twitch. I am going to be live streaming at the time of this video. Hopefully on Monday, we're going to have a new live stream showing up and I will be hopefully be playing on the sub server. So. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to check it out. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to, like I said, click the subscribe button and also give this video a huge thumbs up. Guys, I really, I'm really enjoying this Let's Play so far, having a lot of fun with the new mods, and I hope you guys are as well. I'll see you guys in the next episode, and as always, thanks for watching.